I came out of it and realised I had no idea what had gone on. I think a lot of patients are now having that experience where they're coming out the end and I didn't talk about it for a long time afterwards and realised that I had no idea. That was, it was kind of like a, it was a bit of a blur really that time in my life and I, I wanted to explore it because I, I wanted to know. I got fascinated by the science of what cancer was. And, but also the things that tried to save my life. And I, because I realised I had no idea about those either, those things that I sat there and had these chemicals pumped into me, but no idea how they came about. And when I was researching into cancer, I realised that because cancer is just you, which I had no idea it was when I was having it and even after it, that I, I didn't do anything. There was this an element of, well, who, who did save me? Like, why, why am I still here? And that's. Mm. That's the question I pose in the show, and I guess that's the question I've been trying to answer through making it. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that realisation has been fantastic, really. You were 19 when you were yeah. initially diagnosed. Incredibly brave then to, from such a young age, decide actually I'm going to take this to the stage and make a show that I think it's fair to say is quite light-hearted in places. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's taken a while to, to get there, but there are light-hearted um, moments in it. And I think that's that's partly to make it accessible because the fact is is that no one wants to sit there and and hear me moan about cancer or go on about those things and and there are moments throughout it that you realize that the way to make it entertaining and to make it a theater show you have to look at those light-hearted moments and and also to make especially the dark moments accessible you have to look at those and go well how how can i tell that story to an audience and some of the ways are to make them slightly light-hearted and uh, i found that's that's been a really nice way to be able to tell that story. Talking of which, I understand that your funeral playlist is included in the show. Yes, yeah. I, um, I talk about my, my funeral playlist and that, and that comes from uh, an, a, a relationship that I think a lot of cancer patients have and um, all of them will agree happens is that um, I have an affair with an IV stand throughout the show. Uh, her name's Ivy and she has uh, a big effect on my life. Um, we do drugs together. She shaves off all my hair. She's, yeah, she's a bit, she's, she's bad really. Um, but, it, and she also like wants to talk to me about my funeral and accepting my mortality. And so we, we together uh, have a look at the top 10 funeral playlist and have a nice dance together. The show opens at the Vault Festival, I think I'm right in saying tomorrow. Yes. What's yeah. in store? Uh, yeah, tomorrow at 6.15. Uh, I'll be starting, starting the run and dishing out some chemotherapy cocktails, uh, looking at how, how a selfie can sum up what cancer is and, yeah, taking, taking the audience hopefully on a journey from diagnosis to remission to relapse to all the things that encompass having cancer at a young age. Well, Toby, thank you ever so much for coming and telling us about it. I have to ask, how is your health now? Yeah, I'm nearly five years in remission, which with Hodgkin's is a fantastic place to be and, yeah, very happy.